For years now, robots have gotten a bad reputation for stealing people's jobs. But advancements in sensor technology and computer vision are making it possible for robots to act as human assistants, not replacements on the manufacturing floor. One Massachusetts-based startup working on the technology to make this human-robot partnership a reality is Veo Robotics. At Veo Robotics, we enable fluid human-machine interaction. We make large robots and other kinds of industrial machinery aware of human presence and responsive to that human presence so humans and robots can work closely together in collaboration and manufacturing. A collaborative robot is a robot where you can have humans and robot working in the same space and it's considered safe for the humans. Traditionally, we've sort of had robots behind fences and there's been sort of a safety barrier between this. For collaborative robots, humans and robots can be in the same space, they can collaborate, it's safe enough that if the person is in the way of the robot, it will stop without hurting the person. All right, checking this thing again. Found the problem, you think we're good now? Okay. Clara Vu is the co-founder and vice president of engineering at Veo Robotics. She got her start in the field working for iRobot, the maker of the Roomba. One thing I've learned in 20 years of building robots is that people are amazing. The more you try to automate things, the more you realize that there are so many things that people do you know, naturally without even thinking about it that are difficult or impossible to automate. So what that means is that when you want to build manufacturing applications that are especially that are flexible and quick to create and change, that human interaction is a really critical part of that. You can actually pay off the cost of full automation over the lifetime of a product. Customers ultimately want higher quality, they want faster product cycles, they want more options. And the robot doesn't know anything about that. So you really need the ingenuity of the human worker in order to, to give those things to customers today. So what we want to do is we want to bring those things together. A number of companies, including ABB and Universal Robots, also think humans are a crucial part of manufacturing and already make smaller robots to safely work alongside employees. Rethink Robotics, now a part of German automation company HAHN Group, was well known for the release of its Sawyer Cobot in 2012. One of the things that we've seen over the past 10 years or so is the availability of power and force limited collaborative robots. They're small, they're not very powerful, and they move slowly. So if they bump into a production worker, they uh, realize that and they stop immediately. And they also can't really hurt a production worker themselves because they're not very strong and they don't move very fast. Unfortunately, the kinds of payloads that those power and force limited robots are limited to are generally around 10 kilograms and under. Most of the robots applied in manufacturing today are there for their superhuman qualities. They can move very fast, they can position things very precisely, and they also carry very large workloads. So those collaborative power and force limited robots have been very useful for assembly of small things. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to extend those advantages to all robots, regardless of the size, whether it's a robot that can carry a car or a robot that can carry a car door or a robot that moves fast and positions things very precisely. What many people don't know is that robots in factories today are literally kept in cages. The cages are not to keep the robots in, the robots are bolted to the floor, they're not going anywhere, but the cages are there to keep humans out because the robot is not aware of the human and it's, you know, it can be thousands of pounds and it's moving really fast and people can get hurt. So that means that you have to keep what people do and robots do completely separate. So with our system, you can actually have a person and a robot working together to achieve the same goal. To free robots from their cages, Veo Robotics retrofits large, existing industrial robots from well-known companies like KUKA, FANUC, ABB, and Yaskawa with 3D depth sensors and computer vision software. The company is using Xbox Connect depth cameras for now, but is working on building its own sensors. Veo Robotics has conducted trials for its system with a number of automotive, household appliance, and consumer packaged goods manufacturers. Its first product goes on sale this month for $30,000. What you're seeing here is a visualization of what the Veo system understands about the work cell. So the red dots are a person that it's observing, 
The orange robot is obviously the robot. The yellow dots surrounding the robot are what we call the robot future cloud. Those are all the places that the robot could get to within the latency of the system. So what we do is then we measure the distance between any point in that future cloud and any point that's a part of it in person that we observe. And we make sure that, that when that distance becomes too small, we slow or stop the robot so that the person is always safe. Loop Ventures, a VC firm that focuses on frontier tech, estimates that the collaborative robot market will exceed $9 billion by 2025. But not everyone is convinced that robots and humans will play nice. In 2017, Bill Gates suggested implementing a robot tax to make up for the tax revenue lost by replacing human workers. He added that the tax money could be put towards social services like elder care and better education for children. That same year, the European Parliament struck down a draft motion that would have levied a tax on robot owners, fearing that the tax would stifle progress. The tax would have funded the retraining of workers who had been displaced from their jobs. And though not a robot tax per se, one of the most roboticized countries in the world, South Korea, did reduce a tax incentive for businesses investing in automation in 2018. I don't think taking a, a, a tax on robots is very helpful because at the end of the day, we should grow manufacturing. In the most highly automated plants we have today, there is less than one robot for every 10 people. We penetrated less than 10% of the industry and, and where we've done it is in the plate shop, where you don't want people to be. It's in the welding shop, which is environmentally not very friendly. And it's in the paint shop. Once we get to sort of the rest of the factory, we haven't been able to build robots yet to do these jobs because we are, in some sense, very difficult customers. So Audi builds an A4 in 4 million different configurations. We want different seats, we want different audio, we want all of this, which makes it almost impossible to program for a robot to do. So, and that's why we have humans, because we're very good at cognitive functions and doing all of this. What we hear from every factory, every line manager, everybody we talk to is that they can't hire enough production workers. The production labor workforce is aging out and one of the things that we see as an advantage of our system is that physical strength will no longer be required for production workers. This company is predicated on the belief that production labor continues to be tremendously important in manufacturing. Veya Robotics technology is designed to work with one robot in a single work cell, but the team hopes to expand that to entire manufacturing lines in the future. Collaborative robots in some size will democratize access to robots. It used to be that we would only see robots in very large enterprises, the automotive, the aerospace. Now, through collaborative robots, it's made possible for very small mom and pop shops to adopt a robot it's simple enough to program that they can basically buy one of these, they can install it, and they can use it within half an hour. And that completely sort of changes the equation, both in terms of cost and in terms of agility. So I think that's going to become a pretty big deal.